Today we will introduce the lens vibrating feeder and the adjustment of the structural position of each part. This is the lens vibrating feeder of Samsung Hanwha Pick and Place machine. Because the docking requirements between each structure are high, if there is a position deviation, it will not function properly. After the lens vibrating feeder is debugged normally, you cannot push hard or hold the vibrating bowl with your hands. This is a bowl. After the debugging is normal, there is no need to hold the bowl with your hands. Because this bowl is softly connected, it is easy to deflect when pushing the bowl hard and parts cannot pass through during operation. During transportation, the lens feeder is also affected by vibration, and the bowl may also shift slightly. There is an offset problem in the position of this bowl. After the debugging is normal, the bowl cannot be pushed hard by hand. The following will introduce how to debug if the vibrating bowl feeder is offset. First dismantle this. Disassemble this too. Disassemble this too. Disassembling these parts is mainly to facilitate debugging and inspection. After disassembly, check whether this position has shifted in height up and down, left and right, and front and rear distance. Use your hands or a tool to check that the lens passes easily. The screws of the passage here also need to be removed. We need to check whether there is any tilt problem on the left and right sides. And this screw. Remove the other screws from this channel as well. You can also remove the green gland screw for easy inspection. Use your hands to check whether it is flush and whether the lens passes easily. If deflection occurs, debug the base of the four screws. Loosen the four screws to debug the vibration bow left and right offset. The distance is too large or the distance is small offset problem. Once the screws are loosened, align the channel position, requiring left-right, top-bottom, and front-back positions to be aligned. The bow channel and the straight channel are a little closer together, probably at a half mi distance. After completing the alignment operation, we use the lens to gently push forward and check for jamming problems. Check both sides of the aisle. After debugging is complete, make sure there are no problems and lock the four screws. While locking, press the steel ring with your hand. Check the position again after locking. Detect whether the left and right aisles are aligned. Are the two aisles in the same straight line? Then proceed to tighten the other three screws. These four large screws are to adjust the height of the vibrating base. The four large screws are to adjust the top and bottom height alignment. The bow's gland is also adjustable up and down, mainly for the different heights of the lenses. The height of the gland should not be too low or too high, probably around a millimeter. If it passes through normally, it is fine. The screws on the green gland are also height adjustable to accommodate lenses of different heights. 
Adjust and secure all the gland screws on the bow all the way round. After securing the screws, test the lens again to see if it passes through easily. If the height is too low, the gland screws are adjusted upwards. Finally, use Autoran to check that debugging is working. All channel lenses pass through properly as OK. If the lens doesn't appear to be stuck, the tuning is normal. There are two kinds of adjusting the delivery speed of the lens voltage and frequency. Please do not modify the parameters after we have debugged it properly. U180 for voltage. Press the center button for adjusting the frequency. Left and right rotations are modified to change values. These two controllers, one controls bow vibration and the other controls linear vibration. It has been debugged properly so far. The parameters are different for each machine, so memorize the current parameter values before debugging the parameters. Don't press the button for a long time because there are many function control parameters in it. We only need to adjust the voltage and frequency, the others are not modified. There is a switch on top of the controller that is the power switch for the controller, it can be turned on or off individually. This is a linear vibration control switch. That's the end of today's tutorial, I hope to give me a like and a follow.